Good morning, Jump Start Nation. Hallelujah. Friday, God has been faithful. He has brought us through another week. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just real quickly, let me remind you again, please jump down there and hit the share button. Please share these. These word, This word needs to get out. We need people to get a hold of it. And uh, praise God, uh, the word matters, and it matters every minute of every day. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, Mary. It's good to see you. You made it to jumpstart. Awesome. Praise God. Glad you found it. Amen. I have a, I have a page called Jumpstart Tribe, but I primarily use Byron Z. Mills Ministries, okay? And then what I'll do is once it's over, I'll send it over that way. Hey, Jill, good morning. Good morning, good morning. We send blessings to the great state of Missouri. Good morning, Nancy. We bless North Carolina. Praise God. So good to see you guys jumping on here. Beautiful Friday morning. Praise God forever. Thank you, Lord. We'll give everybody a chance just to kind of get on, and then we'll get busy jump starting. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Yes, it is a wonderful morning, Nancy. Praise God. It's a blessed morning. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Jennifer. It's good to see you. Praise God. Glad you could join us. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Brother Brian. Good to see you, man. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning, honey. Uh, Bria is uh, on as Byron's Emails Ministries. Good morning, Jamal. Good to see you, brother. Praise God. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good morning to you too, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to take a few minutes, a couple minutes here. We're going to speak the word together. That's what this is all about. This is a very interactive half an hour where I'll read scripture and uh, explain it. Amen. And uh, hey, Andy, good morning. Good morning. You are blessed and highly favored. Good morning, Shonda. Hallelujah. Amen. So good to see everybody getting on. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, Megan. Hello. Hello. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the whole genesis of this was back in March when the COVID thing hit and all the things were shutting down. Good morning, Cliftina. We bless the wonderful state of Arizona. Cliftina, praise God. Good morning, Todd. And by the way, happy birthday. Yesterday was your birthday. Happy birthday, Todd. Praise God. God was faithful to bring you through another year. Isn't that wonderful, man? So happy belated birthday. I would sing to you, but I don't want to hurt your ears. <laughs> Amen. So the whole point of jump start is speaking the word. We take the time to speak the word of God. Amen. Releasing the word, speaking the word of God. And uh, man, we've done so many. There's probably 150 of these. If you look on the Byron Z. Mills ministry page, you can go back and look at all of them and just feed on. It's been rich revelation. It is a fabulous Friday. Totally agree. Praise God. Praise God. I know, honey. Todd just turned 30. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you have to pray for me for lying. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You know what? Um, it's important that we speak the word. Speak in line with the word. That doesn't mean you have to go around quoting the word all day, you know, even though that wouldn't hurt sometimes, but to speak in line with the word. I said something yesterday, and when I got through saying it, it was nothing but unbelief. And I actually stopped and said, I cancel that. I renounce those words. I cancel the assignment. See, every word you speak is an assignment. It goes out on assignment. If, if you are constantly speaking, boy, I tell you what, man, I think I'm getting arthritis and it's getting worse. You just sent your words. Hey, Garland. Good morning, Garland. Good morning, Stephanie. You just gave your words the assignment to create arthritis in your body. And uh, you keep on doing that over and over again, you'll produce it. Amen. I remember, uh, uh, amen. Uh, hey, honey, Jennifer just said good morning to you. So good to see you, Jennifer. Praise God. Love it. Amen. Anyway, Brother Hagen, the man that trained me in ministry, he went home to be with the Lord a long time ago, but God had raised him up off a deathbed when he was 16. He had a deadly disease, and he was on a deathbed. He was paralyzed, 
and he got a hold of Mark eleven twenty three, where Jesus said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, this is the old King James Version, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, what, uh, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what things he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. If a man believes in his heart what he says with his mouth, and he says it with his mouth, he'll have what he says. Praise God. So the key is believing in your heart what you're saying with your mouth. And I'll tell you, there's a real secret here. If you'll say something long enough, you'll start believing it in your heart. Amen? It may take some uh, longer than others to make that heart-mouth connection, but if you keep speaking a thing, listen, positive or negative, if you keep speaking a thing repeatedly over and over, over a period of days, weeks, months, and years, eventually your heart is going to agree with it. When your heart agrees with it, hey, Myrtle, when your heart agrees with it, that's when it's going to begin to manifest in your life. And so Brother Hagen shared a story about two young men. They were uh, brothers. I think they're a year or two apart. They were playing. And one day they were climbing a tree. They were young. I think just young kid, teenagers, te you know, mid-teenagers. Mid and the one brother said to the other, I won't live to see 40. I'll be dead by the time I'm 40. And the other brother said, not knowing it, he said, man, don't, don't say that stuff. Don't, don't say that. He said, that's just not even funny. But he said, no, I'm serious. I will not live past 40. Well, he kept saying that. He said that throughout his teen years. He said that in his 20s. He's good morning, Jerry. Hey, man, good morning, morning to y'all. Hey, Amen. And so this young man kept saying in his 20s and his 30s, I'll be dead by the time I'm 40. I will be dead. I won't live to see 40. And uh, his younger brother all through those years said, you know, you just don't need to say that. You just, just don't, don't say that. Why would you keep saying that? And so about two weeks before his 40th birthday, he, uh, he uh, got sick, and they took him to the hospital, and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. They said, we don't, rec we don't even know what this is. We, we don't know what disease it is. We don't know how to treat it. We're not sure what's going on, why he's, why he's bed fast. We just can't figure it out, so we don't know what to do. We don't know what surgery to do. We don't know what medication to give him. He's just dying, and we don't know what to do about it. And two or three days before his 40th birthday, he died. Amen. That guy died from the words he was speaking over and over for 20-some years. He kept speaking that. See, Mark, uh, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The death and life is in the power of your tongue. If you're speaking death, you better be speaking death to the right things. If you're speaking life, speak life to the right things. You know, Jesus cursed that fig tree in Mark 11. He said, no man will eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And that tree died. He cursed that tree. Jesus used his mouth and ministered death to that tree just to demonstrate the power of it. Uh, I have, in praying for people, have laid hands over the years on people with tumors and I've commanded them to die. I command this tumor to die in Jesus' name. I command you to dissipate and disappear. I curse you at the root. What was I doing? I was using my mouth to speak death to death. I was speaking death to the curse, to death to the tumor, death to the cancer. And in many, many of those cases, um, the, the tumor would leave. It would begin to die. Not instantly. Some, some was a day or two. Some was a week or two. But we've seen, and some were instant where the tumor literally just shriveled up underneath the hand, our hands. Amen. So death and life are in the power of our tongue. Let's just say that out loud. Say, let's jumpstart that. Say this out loud. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. I know what to speak death to. And I know what to speak life to. Say this out loud. Let's jumpstart this. I speak life over my body. My body is strong. 
My body is healthy. My body is free from sickness and disease. I'm full of strength and energy. The anointed one lives in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wow, man. Praise God. That's life. That's ministering life to your body. Scientists and neurosurgeons discovered uh, several, oh, many, many years ago that your speech mechanism is attached to more areas of your brain than any other part of your body. Your tongue, your mouth, your speech it is more associated with more parts of your brain than any other part or function in your body. In other words, what you say is affecting your brain more than anything you do. And they've also found out that what you say with your mouth actually affects your heart. Your heart has uh, memory cells in it. Did you know that your heart has memory cells in it? Memory nerve, memory cells. Amen. Just like you have neurons, uh, memory cells in your brain, your heart also has memory cells. And they've discovered that your heart is able to remember long-term, long-term memory in there, deep, deep-held memory. All right? So you literally can... Uh, know something by heart. See, some things we, we know in our head, but we don't know it in our heart yet. We've not spent enough time to get it from here to here, okay? But you literally have, physically have memory cells in your heart. Your heart is storing memories. And we need to make sure that the memories that we're allowing to be stored in our heart, it's at a subconscious level, are really the Word of God. We need to know the Word by heart, Glory to God. You can actually, the scriptures can actually become a part of your DNA. They are discovering that. That experiences, life experiences, these are neuroscientists, that life experiences, positive and negative, traumas get written on our DNA. They become a part of us. They become a part of us. So very often things that, the negative traumatic things that have happened to us become a part of us. And so we have to trust the Holy Spirit to erase that, those traumatic things, so that it's not who we are anymore. And we allow the Word of God and the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of His goodness, that we allow the Word and the Holy Spirit to write that onto our heart and onto our DNA. You can literally implant the Scriptures and write them onto your DNA. You can program your DNA. It's called epigenetics. It's, the, it's, it's discovered, they discovered around the turn of the century. It's not just about genetics, it's about epigenetics. It's what you do it, when you, you can write, you can rewrite the program on your DNA so that it becomes a part of you. you it becomes you. So as we meditate on the Word of God, we become transformed, transformed metamorphosis by the renewing of our mind, and that includes the, the memory, the mind of our heart. Stay with it. See, that's why we jumpstart five days a week. Stay with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. I'm writing the Word of God on my heart. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. We speak health over your neck too, Shonda, in Jesus' name. We release the healing anointing and the healing grace of Jesus over and on your neck. We speak life to your neck. We speak alignment to your neck. We speak healing and health to your neck. We speak restoration of nerve cells, alignment to your neck. We speak a reversal of arthritis to your neck. We speak to the cushioning in between, the, 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 uh, the uh, vertebrae. We speak that they are being restored and rebuilt. We speak alignment. We speak peace. We release the anointing right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I thank you for ministering your healing power to Shonda's neck, all the way down into the base of her neck, the upper part of her spine, up into the base of her skull. We release that healing heat the heat of your anointing. We speak it into her body like a hot oil. We speak that into her neck and begin to reconstruct. We speak and command the neck to be reconstructed 
in Jesus' name. Shonda, say this out loud. The healing anointing of Jesus is soaking into my neck right now. Say this, Shonda. I am absorbing the healing virtue of Jesus. It is restoring my neck. Say this out loud, Shonda. My neck is pain-free. I'm able to move my neck any way I want to move it. We speak to the trauma. We undo that which trauma and uh, different things have caused there, Father. I thank you for giving her a brand new neck in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. His stripes healed your neck. His stripes healed your neck. When those stripes were laid on the back of Jesus, that was for the healing of your neck. He healed you. Not going to, already did. Hallelujah. Say this out loud, Jumpstart Nation. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. You're welcome, Shonda. We're in agreement. We're in agreement. We're in agreement with you. We got a Jumpstart Nation. Glory to God. We believe that healing virtue and anointing is saturating your neck and restoring your neck to normal. Amen. You're very welcome. That's what Jumpstart Nation is all about. Hallelujah. As Ginger testified, she may be on here. Ginger testified she was healed of ulcers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, Rhea. Praise God. Healed. Come on, Jumpstart Nation. Let's speak over Shonda and Pastor Rhea's neck. We declare that your necks are healed, totally restored, perfect function. I saw these words just now come up out of my spirit. Loose. We loosen, we loosen. That's the word I saw. I saw that in writing, in the spirit. Remember how we're talking about seers and knowers? I'm a, I see. We speak loosening. We say that your necks are loosed. Loosed from all catches and catching. Loosed from uh, not functioning and moving. Loosening of the neck. We thank you that the oil of the Holy Spirit is lubricating your neck. Necks. Your necks in Jesus' name. Lubricating it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Loosened, loosened. Just like your back is healed, Stephanie. Loosened. I see uh, I see an oil can. I don't know if y'all remember this. This, is, this will date me. The, the kind that had the long stem on it and you'd have oil in it and you'd pop the bottom and it'd tink, 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 tink. You know that old oil can where you'd oil a bike chain? I think that's an angel. Uh, oiling. I see him oiling your necks and spine. I see oil being pumped out of this can. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's the Holy Spirit or an angel, but there is oil, golden oil being like you do on a bike chain. It's being, it being pumped onto your necks right now. And this oil is being pumped on into your spine, onto and soaking into your spine. Man, the Lord is doing powerful things. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Well, welcome. Praise God. Thank you, Rob. That's awesome, man. Good to have you on here. Praise God. Thank God for the oil of the Holy Spirit, that healing oil, you know, anointing. Jesus called it the anointing. He said, I'm anointed to heal the sick. The word anointed means to smear on, to rub on, like you would rub uh, peanut butter on a piece of bread, smear it on. That's anointing the bread with peanut butter. <laughs> And Jesus said, I'm anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. That's in Luke 4. Jesus says, I'm anointed. That means God had rubbed the oil of the Holy Spirit. The oil of God's power was all over Jesus. And he was going around touching people and speaking healing. And they were being healed in that same anointing. Hallelujah. It is. Thank you. That's awesome, Shonda. It's pouring out. It's pouring out. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. Thank you that that's happening. It's coming out of your neck. All that poison's coming out of your neck. It's being replaced by the pure, fresh, clean oil of the Holy Spirit, of the fresh, clean power of God is displacing all that poison, displacing all that, and it's pouring out. You're seeing properly. It's happening. It's happening. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Wow, man. Make sure you all share these testimonies. Just like Ginger shared that she was healed of the ulcer, uh, and Nancy uh, shared, if you got a hold of that on Facebook, Nancy had an ear issue, an ear, and she commanded her ear and received her healing, and she said there was a sharp pain for a, a minute or two when she commanded her ear to be healed, this pain, and then when the pain left, her ear was restored and she could hear again. Wow, that's awesome. That's the power we have as a jumpstart nation. That's the power we have as a jumpstart nation. Glory to God. Say it again. This is 1 Peter 2, 24. Say it again. With the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. That's what it says, that you were healed by the stripes of Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Kayla, that is awesome that your kids are listening. Man, listen, let me tell you, these children get it. They don't have to just have a babyfied version of the gospel. They're not a little spirit being inside of a body. They're just as strong and just able as a spirit inside of a body. We are a spirit being. You are a spirit living in a body. When you die, you will live on. Your kids are listening. That's awesome. And they're healed and they're healthy. So good you're exposing them to the Word of God. Now, Psalm 91 belongs to us. And we're going to jumpstart Psalm 91. Psalm 91 says, uh, I uh, with, God says, with long life, this is what God said to you, says to you, with long life, I will satisfy him. Praise God. That's awesome, Megan. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So your back was, back in August when we had the healing service, your back was healed during the service and has been no pain since. That is awesome. That is, wow, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So you've been healed, Megan. That is fantastic. In that healing meeting we had back in August, in the middle of a COVID event. Thank you for sharing that. So another back healed. And I'm telling you, that's a testimony to Shonda. It's a testimony to Rhea. God is healing. Stephanie, that anointing is working in you. Megan, you agree with that, don't you? That anointing is working in their spine. God said, with long life, man, you guys are on it today. Glory to God. With long life, well, see, when you testify, it encourages my faith. When you share what God's doing, you share the miracles that are happening, it it. It inspires my believing. It inspires our believing. I'm telling you, man, miracles are happening all up in this Jumpstart Nation. I'm telling you, this is a movement. Glory to God. We're going to have to take this to the states and then to the nations. Glory to God. We'll just let the Lord do that. Jesus knows how to do all that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God, Stephanie, I see God doing even more in your spine. I, I see some type of, some type of a, a yellow liquid being ministered to you by the Spirit of God. It's awesome. It's glorious. It's, it's wonderful. Golden, blessed, golden and blessed anointing. Glory to God. Your back is stronger than before that accident happened in Jesus' name. It's, you're blessed. Yes, it's yours. It's yours. It's happening. It's happening. Amen. Praise God. Don't be surprised. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Amen. Healing is flowing into your neck, Terry. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing. I hear a song. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's flowing right now. God's healing power. Hallelujah. It's flowing right now. It's flowing. I hear that in the spirit. It's flowing. It's flowing. God's healing power is flowing. The floodgates are opened. And his healing power is ministering to you. Man, it's the love of God. He loves you. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. He doesn't love you, but doesn't care about your body. He loves you and wants your body healed. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. Me too. Me too, Stephanie. And you know what? That anointing is happening right now. It's happening right now. Now. That anointing is working in you right now. Right now. Praise God. Anyway, God said with long life, <laughs> I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. God guarantees you, promises you long life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Long life. It's God's plan for you to live long and strong. Amen. Now, we don't always uh, receive 
like we should. Amen? But it's not God's on God's end. It's his plan for you to live long, healthy, and strong. Praise God forever. Say this out loud. With long life, God is satisfying me and showing me his salvation. Now, the word salvation means more than just going to heaven. It means more than just being forgiven. It means more than not going to hell. That's just only as part of salvation. The word salvation, when you study it throughout the Bible, it includes healing. It includes peace in your emotions, peace, uh, mental health, emotional health. It means wholeness, soundness. It even means protection and prosperity. That's the whole package. Sal salvation means healthy and whole in every part of your life, not just not going to heaven. Healthy, healthy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we speak to Rob. We speak to Jill's husband. Father, we thank you right now. We speak healing. Your healing virtue. Lord, we thank you that your stripes also takes care of the physical infirmities, physical problems that have uh, attacked all of us. Lord, that uh, robs body. Father, I thank you. He's going to begin to agree with you on 1 Peter 2.24. I encourage you to, when this jump starts over, go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. All right, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, and it says, With his stripes we were healed. Not going to be. Were. When Jesus was whipped mercilessly by those Romans, they ripped the skin off his back. Those whips, those cat of nine tails, had bone and iron and glass in them, shards in them. They would wrap around the body of the victim and they would jerk that back. And when they would jerk that cat of nine tails back, it would rip the flesh, cut furrows through the flesh. They whipped Jesus so many times that his body no longer, you couldn't see the stripes. It was just one big stripe. And his muscles were exposed and his sinews were exposed. They had ripped into his flesh with those cat of nine tails to the point that in 1 Peter 2.24, it's singular. It says, with his stripe. In the Greek, it's singular. With his stripe, we were healed. Man, what love. Jesus took that beating for our healing. And it doesn't say with his stripes, God might heal you someday, going to heal you. No, no, let's get in agreement with him. He healed us with his stripes. Don't look at your body to ask if it's healed. You look at the word. With his stripes, we were healed. Say this out loud. With the stripe of Jesus. I was healed. And since I was healed, I am healed now. Stay in that place of faith. Because I was healed. Can you see those stripes on Jesus? Can you see them ripping his flesh off? Can you see his body being beaten and abused? Every time they laid that slam, slammed him with that cat of nine tails, that was another disease Jesus was taking on himself that was another disease he was taking away from you. Praise God forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, we're almost out of time. Proverbs chapter four. This has just been a healing jumpstart and it's a wonderful one. Thank you for sharing your testimonies. Thank you so much, so much. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Just about done and we're gonna call it a week. Man, you guys are so blessed. Listen, here's what it says. Proverbs 4.20, and we're going to finish right here. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them, the words of God, the healing words of God. Keep them, right, right, in the midst of your heart. Keep them there. It's easy for you to turn them loose. Keep these healing words in the midst of your heart. Speak them and think them and meditate them. And he said, for they are life, these words of God that we've been talking about, healing scriptures. Go find those scriptures. Keep them in your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and they are health to all their flesh. 
God's words, this word health in the Hebrew is medicine. God's words, his healing words, find out all the healing promises, begin to hear them, meditate them, memorize them, talk them, meditate them, think on them, make a list of them on paper. They will literally become medicine to all your flesh. You talk about a miracle drug, you get this in your mouth, you get God's word in your heart, it will literally become medication to every single pain and disease in your body. There's nothing that this word of God won't heal. But you've got to get it in your eyes, get it in your ears, incline to it, keep it in your heart. That's what Jumpstart Nation's all about. I love you guys. Have a blessed week. Please share this. Please share it. So thankful for all the testimonies. Pray, praise God. Love you all. Hey, Jill's husband. Brother, good to see you, man. Y'all have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend. See you Monday morning.